This conference will now be recorded. Praise the Lord, everyone. And we thank him for another day, for a day that we've never seen, but God has already been in this day. We thank him for his mercies that are new this morning and that his compassion, they fail not and that great is his faithfulness. Father God, we just thank you for being our father. We thank you for loving us so much and giving your son that we can have eternal life. We can have a relationship with you that is intimate and uh, loving and growing from day to day as we get to know you more and more. Father, as we come before you today, we ask in you precious, precious Holy Spirit to enlighten us, to show us in your word what is the heart of the Father and, and what is his true purpose for our lives in this in this world. We thank you now that as we uh, go into the word of God today, that we won't leave the same in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Um, I say on uh, every day I have a, a little saying for the day of the week. Um, yesterday was thankful Thursday. Today is fantastic Friday. <laughs> And uh, I thank God that is fantastic only because of what he's doing in my life. Today, we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 58, verses, verse 6. From the commentary, it says, God said, this is the kind of fasting I want. Remember that. I want. This is what I want. Free those who are wrongfully imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. This is the kind of fasting that the Father want, wants, that we free those who are wrongfully imprisoned, that we lighten the burdens of those who work for, for us. We let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Going right into the commentary, it says, from the heart of God. Are you looking for ways to show your devotion to me? Many people do. They imagine long, intense times of prayer, listening to around-the-clock worship music, becoming deeply involved in a ministry that oozes true spirituality, reading the Bible for hours a day and memorizing lots of verses, being poor enough to demonstrate detachment from the things of the world, yet rich enough to put impressive amounts in the offering plate for missions. Thank you, Lord. Having faith, but without taking any foolish risks, and more, your definition of devotion may be somewhat, may be off sometimes, but I love the heart behind all these things when you do them in the right spirit and none of them when you don't. I want to go back to the devotions, devotion, devotion. That word um, really stuck out to me. And devotion means loyalty or deep affection. Love, reverence, faithfulness, and your allegiance, your love, your love for God, your reverence for him, your faithfulness to him, your allegiance to him. We pledge allegiance to the flag every day with the children, but our allegiance to God, our oneness with God, our, our love for God, our loyalty to God, our reverence for God, our faithfulness to God, our deep affection for him. That is our true devotion. And so when we talk about devotion, and, and it's not about our due, but who we are to God. We are his children. And the closeness he wants us to acquire with him, to become close and intimate with him, so we can know the very heart and mind of our father. That's what he wants us to know. There are times when 
when you just sit in the presence of God, just still, and you quiet, you have to quiet your soul because so much goes on in a day. Uh, yesterday came home uh, feeling real good, and then my got some news about my son, and he ended up having to be taken back to the hospital. So my 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 day totally changed. But God didn't change in that day. His love for me and his word he speaks to me, I have spoken to me, remain the same. And because I love him and because I'm devoted to him, I reverence him. I honor him in my life. I'm faithful to him. I'm loyal to him and I'm, I love him deeply. I could have been uh, anxious and worried and I'm just all over the place. But I said, Lord, you're there. I'm going to pray and I'm going to go and you're going to go before me, go before me and prepare the way. And so in saying that our devotion to God and all of these things, we can read the Bible <clears throat> and we should for hours and hours during the day. We can, we can, we can memorize lots of verses and we should because David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we should have the word of God in our heart. We can do all of these things that uh, that have been shown to us at the beginning of this commentary. But is that what the heart of God is? Is that what He wants? He said your He said your your de definitions of devotion may be off sometimes, but I love the heart behind all of these things when you do them in the right spirit. And none of them when you don't. Now, look at what he says here. I love this. I love this. He said, very few people take time to ask some really important questions. These are the questions. They look for ways to show devotion to me without asking what's really on my heart. And that's what we have to go back to. Lord, what, 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 what's on your heart today? What would you have me to do today? Because sometimes I can wake up and I can have my day all planned out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the other. But I had to go back to considering I didn't make this day. I really don't know what's going to happen in this day if I don't talk to the Lord. And then there are some things that happen that because I've sat in his presence, he's equipped me and he's given me the reassurance that whatever comes your way, as long as you're listening for my voice and don't get too hurried in your day, we can be so busy as saints of God, doing the will of God, doing the work of God, doing ministry, doing all the things that we do in, in everyday life. And in everything that we do, we need to hear the voice of God. Those that are married, they need to hear the voice of God, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife. Those that are parents, we need to hear the voice of God, how to be a good parent, how to really hear when our kids are in distress. Sometimes they're talking to us, but we're not hearing them. Sometimes our wives and our husband are talking and talking, but we're not hearing them. We're not hearing their heart. So we don't know how to minister to them, how to, how to, God is saying, no, I need for you to stop the day, stop the day, stop all that you're doing today and call your husband and just tell him, I'm so grateful to have you in my life. I'm so grateful that that you you are the person that God have given me to 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 affirm what he said in his word about what a husband should be. I call my wife or I leave her a little love note before I'm off to work and say thank you for all you do. Thank you for your prayers for me. Thank you for thinking about me and, and taking care of me and taking care of the home. That when I come home, it's not all hell has broke loose, but it's peaceful. It's calm because you're here. You're here. Taking the time. Taking the time. He says very few people take time to ask some really important questions. They look for ways to show devotion to me without asking what's really on my heart. What do I desire? What does God desire? What does he really want to see happening in the earth through his people? 
Have we got so caught up in our own lives that we don't even ask him anymore? Sometimes people say, but well, you don't have to ask God all that. You know what clothes to wear. You know, you, you, God gave you common sense. No, scrap that. I want to know the will of God. What I put on today might be something that God has told somebody else in their prayers. Look for this person. When you see this person with this and that on, go to them. I have a word for you. Even the simplest things in life that God that, that God asks us to do, it all has a purpose. He has a purpose. He might tell you to just call someone and encourage them today. He might bring somebody uh, up in your spirit while you're praying to pray for them, to pray for certain leaders, to pray for certain things going on in the world. What is his desire? What is, what is his plan and purpose for this day? I don't know about tomorrow. I say sometimes to the Lord, I don't know what this day holds, but I know who holds this day. So Lord, whatever, whatever needs to be done in this day that you want me to do, let me hear you say it and give me the grace and the, and the power to do it and to get it done. Thank you, Jesus. What is his desire? What pleases <laughs> What pleases the Lord? What ple I know what pleases me, but what pleases the Lord? What pleases him? What gives him joy? What makes him look and smile on us and say, that's my girl. That's my boy right there. They are representing today. They are representing today. Yesterday, our little babies, they had their little graduation ceremony, and they've been practicing and practicing and practicing until that day. And I looked in their little faces yesterday. I said, now, I didn't come out in front of you yesterday because I believe that you could sing this song and that you knew it. And boy, oh boy, their little faces lit up. And I said, can you do this? They said, yeah. Do, do you got it? Yeah, we got it. I was so proud of them, so proud of them, so proud of them. And that is the way your father looks at you every day. When you go to your jobs, when you're in your home, some people may, their job may be as a housewife. They may be working at from home. Whatever your position is in life, God has you in a place and a purpose for that place that you're in. No place that you're in is, 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 is something that's uh, uh, not important to God. When we do the will of the Father, it pleases him. It pleases him. It could be that he told you to take to the fifth grade teachers this day. Take this little encouragement for them because teaching these children, it's not an easy task. It's not an easy task. And sometimes the teachers are tired and they're worn out and they're just like, oh, if I could just get through this day. And God says to go to the fifth grade section and give each one of the teachers this word of encouragement. My, oh, my, that would please the father. And then he says, you know, I love faith and a desire to feel and a desire to fulfill my purposes. But do you take time to think about what my purposes really are. Do you take the time to really, really think about what my purposes are? If you're listening for my voice, here are some things. And I want you to take note, this commentary was very good for me. It was very good for me. It inspired me to really take the time to hear what, what God's heart is drawn to. Let's look at what he says. My heart, my heart is drawn to the oppressed. Now, oppressed means those that are misused, those that are downtrodden, those that are enslaved, those that are abused, those that are under somebody's foot, those who have been beaten up by the world, whose hearts are broken. My heart is drawn to these kind of people. And what does the word of God say? It says that, that Jesus in Acts, let's look at Acts 10, 38. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is drawn to the oppressed. My heart is drawn to the oppressed. It's drawn to them. Who else is going to help them? We don't see people every day with our physical eyes, but in the spirit realm, God can alert us to, there's a young person today, they, they wanna take their lives, they feel hopeless, and we can begin to intercede and pray for that, that child or that person or that mom who, who's at the end of her rope, don't know how she's gonna make it, and say, I'm gonna take my life, not only my life, but everybody in the house. I'm, 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 just, I'm just depressed and oppressed with the situation and the circumstances that I'm going through. I, I don't know where else to turn. And there you come. And here you come. Here you come with the word anointed by God to give a, 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 a life-changing word, a life-changing word to that person to give them life, to set them free. I don't know about nobody else. But I want to see the power of God. I see what the devil is doing every day. But I want to see my father glorified in that. When he sends us to do a work, to bring a word, to bring deliverance, it's not five and six days later, but it's right then and there that people will know that our God is God. And besides him, there is no other God. In, the, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. How God, how God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and what? And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So his heart is drawn to the oppressed, those that the devil is beating down, those that the devil is trying to steal and kill and destroy them. God said, I'm drawn to them. That's my heart. So if that's my heart, it should be my children's heart as well, because you, you, you have me, my spirit living on the inside of you. So what touches me touch, should touch you also. We can't get so busy, saints, doing the ministry that we forget the heart of God. We can't get so busy trying to get ahead in life that we forget the heart of God. We can't get so busy being busy that God is trying to speak to us to do one simple thing that would change the life of one person forever, forever, that will lead somebody back to him. We can't forget the purpose of being saved was to, to each one of us to reach one. And if each one reaches one, before we know it, we'll have a whole world that is looking unto the same God that we serve praying to him, loving him, worshiping him, needing him, not being destroyed by the enemy. That's the heart of our father. That's the heart of our father. He said this again in, in Acts 10, 38. He said, how God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, y'all. We got the Holy Spirit. Not only do we have God's spirit on the inside of us, but we got power. We got power. So we should be doing the same thing Jesus did, going about, doing good, healing all who are oppressed by the devil. I look sometimes, I say, devil, you ain't got all that power. You only got the power that we give to you. You only got the power that we give place to you to have. So we have to shut every door. We have to fortify ourselves and have our minds made up that I'm going to do just what my Savior did. I've been anointed by God to go about doing good healing, healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God is with me too. He said to go into all the world, teaching and preaching this word to all nations, to all cultures, to all kinds of people. And I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. You're not going alone. You're not going alone. 
I'll be with you to the very end of time, demonstrating who I am through my people. He has to do whatever he's going to do, saints of God, through us. He has to use us. Look at Luke chapter four. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I get excited about the Lord because he, he's amazing. And sometimes I said, I said, Lord, I don't know how people can really live without you. They, they, they think they're living, but they're really not. And I, I, I just don't know how anybody can make it without your help. I know that I can't. Because it's in him I live, it's in him I move, and it's in him I have my being. Without him I know that I'm nothing and I can do nothing without it. So if I know that and I'm a Christian, what about those who don't have Christ? What does God feel about them? He said, I love them so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if, if you would just believe in me, if you would just believe in the one that I've sent, I will give you eternal life. But how are they going to know? So let's look at the heart of God. In Luke chapter 4, verse 17, it says, it says this, the attendant, sorry, thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, God. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And verse Verse 20 says, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Verse 21, and he began to say unto them, this day, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. So we've been given the same commission. Then the second thing that he said was the heart of God. I hate, I hate the devastation of sin and I hate its visible, visible manifestation. Like I said, we can see what the devil is doing 24 seven and God hates it. He hates it. And what is he speaking to my heart to be a world changer? I know that I'm not going to change the whole world. One person can't do it. But if each one of us, hearing the voice of God, did what God told us in this day, oh, it'll be a better place to live in. Oh, somebody would be delivered today. Oh, somebody would be healed today. Oh, somebody would be encouraged that want to give up today. The things that he hates, we should hate. The, the devastation that he hates, we should hate. The devastation of sin, the devastation of sin. When we see what sinful acts that people do every day, every day is devastating. When you hear of murder and crimes committed that are horrendous and it gets worse and worse every day, he hates it. And he hates that, not only does he hate the devastation of it, but we can visibly see what it's doing. We can see it when you hear about human trafficking, another person taking another person against their will and putting them in bondage, enslaving them to be a sex, uh, 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 used for sex, for money, and they can't get out. 
Your child gets snatched coming home from school and get raped and abused in the home. Not talking about no stranger danger no more, but these are relatives that are hurting these their own, own children, fathers, mothers, abusing their kids. So God hates this kind of thing. But what does he love? What does he love? In the commentary says, I love those who want my purposes and power to flow through them to fix the things that are wrong in this world. We are not here to just go to church, y'all, and fill up and go and drive and give out a gas and go fill up again and don't go get nobody. Don't bring nobody. Don't talk to nobody. No, we're not. He said, I love those who want my purposes and power to flow through them to fix the things that are wrong in this world. Uh, we are world changers. We're, we don't have the ability in ourselves to fix nothing, but we are anointed by Christ to bring deliverance, to go about doing good to all who are, who are oppressed, who are devastated, who the devil is killing and stealing and destroying and to bring deliverance because God is with us. We're not going alone. We're not going nowhere alone. He is with us. Are we hearing him? Are we hearing him? He says this, when you listen for my voice, expect. Don't listen and get up and don't expect for God to do something or say something or to tell you to do something. He said, when you listen for my voice, expect me to talk about this often. Those things we just talked about. What's his heart? What's his purpose? What does he hate? What does he love? What moves him? Jesus said, the Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw different things happening to people because of sin. People just wandering about with, with no direction, not knowing what to do, where to go, hopeless and helpless and lost without Christ. So he says, when you listen for my voice, expect me to talk about this often. That's his conversation. That's what he's going to talk to you about. He said, expect from me. I love this one. I love this one. Because as a teacher, you know, we give assignments. He said, expect for me to give you. Not Apostle Gaines by herself. Not Teacher Williams by herself. Not Elder Torah by herself. He going to give assignments to, but all of those who name the name of Christ. He got an assignment for you today, honey. He got a sign for you today, assignment for you today, brother. He got an assignment for us today. Expect for me to give you assignments that no one else will notice. I don't want no pat on the back. Did you, did you know that Elder Rose did this? I don't want, I, I don't want that. I want him to, I want to fulfill his assignment and the honor and the glory go to him. And if he decides or he chooses to recognize and honor me with men, so be it. But that's not why I'm doing the assignment he expects of me. He says, expect me to give you assignments that no one else will notice or honor you for. We like honor, but remember your savior that he made himself of no reputation. It wasn't about that. He came with a purpose in, um, in mind. I'm going to die on this cross, no matter what, that I can, I can redeem God's people back to him, that they will have a path back to the father to be who they were originally, be in the place they were at the beginning. That's my purpose. I didn't come here to sit up in no church for you to say, oh, that's Jesus and he got power. Oh, that's Jesus. Did you notice what Jesus did today? Oh, that's Jesus. No, I came to do my father's will. And when my father's will is done, I'm up out of here. Then when I, when I leave here, I'm going to send back the comforter that you can carry on what I started. It didn't stop because he left. 
He said, it's, it's expedient that I leave here because if I don't, you won't receive the one that's coming after me. Who's going to empower you to complete this work until I come again. Hallelujah. He said, expect not only to hear my voice. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one, saints of God. Expect not only to hear my voice, but also to become my voice in situations that need to be made right. Saints, there's so many situations in this world that need to be made right right and if we sit here silent and keep our mouths closed and god is saying speak now speak now say something had a situation in my classroom we know that yoga is not something that needs to be music and all that stuff need to be played over our babies so god kept speaking to me um talk to her about that music because while these children sleeping and that music is playing over them it's going in their spirit she don't understand it, but you just speak and make it right. So I hesitated, hesitated. It will come up, come up. So finally one day I heard the Lord very loudly say, tell her, tell her. So I told her, I said, now that can't be played over them because of what it originates from. And when they're sleeping, it goes in their spirit. Now, this is what I suggest because I know you can play Christian music, instrumental music, and because of what it represents and the power in it, while they're sleeping, that will go in their spirit because that's really what's going to help them. So she changed it. She changed it. Now we listen to instrumental Christian music. But he said, expect not only to hear my voice, but also to become my voice. And I kept sitting there, not speaking. Who knows what the devil would have used that demonic music to do to our babies. They don't need that foolishness. Yoga is a religion. All them poses and stuff they got, it represents an idol. So who's going to stop it? I'm in education. I'm the voice. I'm the one, even if I don't come face to face with each child, when I step on the grounds, I start speaking with my mouth what I want to happen at my school, what I want to change. He said, expect not only to hear my voice, but also to become my voice in situations that need to be made right. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. We have to know what he desires, what pleases him, what pleases him. The prayer today says this. Before I go there, I want to do um, Psalm 103 verses one through six to show you, to show you, just to show you the heart of God and how, how he feels about people being oppressed, people being downtrodden and stepped on and treated like they ain't nothing. You in high positions and you looking down your nose at God's creation, you won't change the laws, you won't do things to help nobody, but you doing things to, to, to elevate yourself? No, no. Let's look at Psalm um, 103, the book of Psalms. Thank you, Jesus. At this moment, just praise him for a minute. Just thank him. Just thank him. I love the way he 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 calibrates us. Because I, I don't know about nobody else. I can get off into a lot of stuff and just be working my little heart out for Jesus. And he says, just sit yourself down somewhere so I can talk to you and tell you what I want you to do today. All that's good. But this is what I want from you today. I want you to do this today. It's not a, it's not a hard thing that I want you to do. This right here. This is what I want you to do. It's not a hard thing. It's not a hard thing to do. But we know that we're going to need him to do it. Let's look at Psalm 103. 
I'm going to be reading it from the uh, from God's word. It says, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise his holy name, all that is within me. Praise the Lord, my soul, and never forget all the good he has done. Verse three, he is the one who forgives all your sins, the one who heals all your diseases, the one who rescues your life from the pit, the one who crowns you with mercy and compassion. Hallelujah. The one who fills your life with blessings so that you become young like an eagle. Verse six is where I want to go. The Lord, the Lord, your dad, your father, the one you belong to, the Lord does what is right and fair for all who are oppressed. The King James says, the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. That's his heart. That's his heart. That's his heart. He makes his ways known to us. The world don't know his ways because they don't serve him. They don't know him. But he makes his ways and his heart known to us. Are we listening to the heart of God? Are we willing to do what he's asking each one of us to do? Will we submit to his heart today? Will we submit? Will we submit to his heart today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One last scripture, and then I'm going to do the prayer that is in the commentary. Let's look at one more, Isaiah chapter 61. The heart of God. We got to ask him. We got to ask him. We got to ask him. What is your heart today? Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. Father of light, show me your way. Isaiah chapter 61. Let's look at it again. Thank you, Jesus. Starting at verse 1. What does it say again? Now, this is the Old Testament. Uh, the spirit of the almighty Lord is with me because the Lord has anointed me to deliver good news to humble people. He sent me, say to yourself, he sent me too. He sent me to heal those who are what? Brokenhearted. To announce that captives will be set free and prisoners will be released. He sent me, say it to yourself again, he sent me to announce the year of the Lord's goodwill and the day of our God's vengeance, to comfort, to comfort all those who grieve. Verse three, he sent me, say he sent me, to provide for all those who grieve in Zion, to give them crowns instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of tears of grief, and clothes of praise instead of a spirit of weakness or heaviness. We will be called the oaks of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, so that he might display his glory. Father, we thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you for the anointing that is on each one of our lives to destroy yokes and break the back of the enemy. Father, I'm so busy looking to satisfy my own heart that I miss the opportunity to satisfy yours. Not after today. Open my eyes wide enough to see beyond my own surroundings and into situations that weigh heavily on your mind. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my eyes that I can see clearly what touches your heart what things you hate, what things you love. But not only that, Lord, that when you prick my heart, open my mouth and tell me to open my mouth to change the wrong that's right. Give me the grace and the courage and the strength and the boldness that no matter what happens to me, I must do the will of God. 
It is the reason I live. Amen. Back into the hands of Apostle Gaines. Bless the Lord. Um, Elder Rose, will you go ahead? Today is the Mountain of Arts and Celebration. Before I um, take it off record, will you go ahead and and uh, pray regarding that mountain? And um, it's so in line with the message that you brought forth this morning um, as it relates to the heart of God. So if you'll just do that in closing, and then we'll open up the line. Amen. Father God, we pray for the arts, uh, those that are involved in, in, in the ministry of acting and, and, and doing plays and music and, and drama in the world. Father God, there are those of us that are Christians that are in that field. There are those of us, Father God, in the body of Christ that you are giving plays and ideas to and giving us music that will change this world. Father, let us not sit on what you've given us. Father God, we thank you that, that today you are encouraging us. You are motivating us to move forward, move forward in this arena. We come against all of the filth that we see on TV, all of the, the, the things that cause this world to be the way it is. We are world changers. You have given us ideas, Father God. You have given us music. You have given us plays. You have given us books. There are books that we are to write to change this world. There are plays that we are to perform that will change this world. We thank you, Father God, that no longer are we being told to stay Stay out of this arena. But Father, we're going forth boldly and taking it, taking it by force. You said the, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. So in the name of Jesus, we go forth and taking this mountain by force, taking it back where we've allowed the world to just take over and do what it wants to do. No more, no more, no more. We stand up. You expect for us to change, to be world changers in every arena. In this arena, Father God, we thank you that from this day forward, those that are called, called, called to do this, that you're encouraging them and you're shooting them forth as an arrow, shooting them forth. We thank you, Father God, that we're changing. We're changing. We're changing what we're seeing and what we're hearing in this mountain, in the arts, Father God, in the dance, in the dance. There is a holy dance that when you anoint your people to dance, it changes the whole atmosphere. It changes the minds and the wills of those that see it. Father God, we thank you for the anointing that is upon those in this ministry that you've called that is destroying and breaking yokes as you send them forth into the world, not just here in the United States, but all over the world. We thank you. We thank you. And we take it back. We take it back in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise that we own stations. We own radio stations. We own uh, media. We own TV stations. We own uh, news uh, stations that we can put the truth out, the real truth, and not be afraid. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 